Okay, in this video what I want to do is just show you how we uh, write a very simple program uh, and program this computer and then run that program. And so before we do that I want to start by looking at the architecture of the computer in a little bit more detail. So let me pull this over here and zoom in a bit so you can see what we've got. And this is kind of the, the architecture of, of the computer and uh, it's kind of broken into two sections. So this top section here is organized around the central 8-bit uh, bus and then the bottom section down here is kind of the control logic. So we'll start with the, with the top section. So this is central kind of 8-bit bus that all of these different uh, components are connected to. And what this does is it, it lets us kind of move information from any component to any other component through this, through this bus. And so for example, if you want to take data from, from RAM, from memory, and put it into the A register, you can do that through this bus. And so what you would do is you would just say, um, you know, take that, that information, RAM is going to put that information on the bus, and then the A register is going to read that information from the bus. Uh, likewise, if you wanted to take information from RAM and put it into the B register, you could do that. You could say at some point in time that information is going from RAM onto the bus, and then the B register is reading whatever's on the bus and putting it into, into the B register. Um, so at any point in time, uh, you can have uh, basically one thing putting information on the bus and then one or more things reading information from the bus. And that's how you move information from uh, one part of the computer to the other. And so um, I won't go through all of these components right now, or maybe uh, in future videos if you guys are interested I can, I can make some future videos going into a lot more detail here. Um, but basically the way that this is controlled is saying like if we want to, for example, load a byte of data from RAM into the A register, um, there's this control logic that is decoding uh, the program that, is, that, that we've written that uh, at different points in time uh, outputs these, these control bits. And so for example, it might uh, at a particular point in time output the, uh, the RAM out uh, bit here and the A in. And then these correspond here to the RAM out and the A in here. And that tells the RAM to put that information out and for the A register to read that information in. And so we could, uh, for example, we could take information from RAM, we could put it in the A register, we could take uh, another byte from RAM, put it in the B register. This ALU is the arithmetic and logic unit. This is the part of the computer that does uh, various math operations. So for example, we might have this add the values of A and B. And so then we can tell the ALU to put its output on the bus. And then we might be able to read that back into the A register. So we could, you know, for example, put uh, you know, one value into A, another value into B. Then we could take the, the sum of those values and then put that back into A. Um, and then we could you know, maybe add another value to B and we can keep adding numbers. And so that's how we might uh, you know, add numbers. And then if we get a result that we want, we could um, then tell the A register to put its information on the bus and tell the output register to read information from the bus. And then that'll display the, the result of that computation. So the instructions that the, that the computer understands are, are down here. This is, a, this is actually a list of all the instructions that the computer understands. And each instruction has a, uh, a sort of a binary value here, which is, which is the actual, you know, what we program in the computer if we want to use that instruction. Um, and then there's sort of a mnemonic here, this little three-letter identifier or two-letter that we use when we're writing the, the program. And then here I've kind of called out what each of these things are. Um, so the first instruction is, uh, is a no operation, which basically does nothing. And that's just more of, uh, so for, for testing or something like that. Uh, the next instruction is uh, load A, which uh, loads a value from memory, so some, somewhere in memory, into the A register. Um, and then the next instruction is add, which will add two numbers, so it'll take a number from memory and add it to whatever's in the A register and then put the result in the A register is actually what this, what this add does. Subtract is the same thing, except it subtracts whatever is in, uh, in memory from whatever's in the A register and then puts that result back in the A register. Store A uh, is for then taking data from the A register and putting it back in memory. Um, so we have load A and store A, kind of complements of each other. Um, and then the output command takes whatever's in the A register and puts it out on the display. So this is how we get output from the computer. Um, and then there's also a jump instruction and a jump carry instruction. So the jump instruction allows us to loop, you know, create loops in our program. The jump carry allows us to create a loop uh, if the carry flag is set. So if the result of the last addition was, uh, was an overflow, then it'll jump, otherwise it won't. Um, so we can create some conditional logic in our programs. Um, and then the halt instruction um, halts execution. So we do that at the end of the program. 
So just an example of a program. This is kind of this a very very simple program that we can uh, that we can do in the computer. This program basically uh, just adds two numbers together and then outputs the result. Uh, so what we're doing is we're saying we want to load into into the A register. So load A four, and this four parameter. Uh, isn't the number four. So we're not putting the number four into the A register. What we're doing is we're putting the contents of memory location four into the A register. Uh, that's how the load A command works. And so here you can see these are this, these are the addresses. So the program sits in addresses 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the program itself is four bytes long. And then the data is two bytes long. And the data are the two numbers that we that we want to add together. So we're loading into the A register the contents of memory location four, which is the number 14. And that's just one of the two numbers that we're going to add. This program is going to add the numbers 14 and 28. The next instruction says add the contents of memory location 5. And so what that's going to do is it's going to go and take this value 28, which is what's in uh, memory location 5, and add it to the A register. So the A register, we loaded 14 into it. Now we're going to add 28. So we're going to have a total of the sum of these two things, which is uh, 42 in the A register. So once we've done that, the next instruction is the out instruction. And this outputs the contents of the A register to the display. And so once we've added the two numbers, we want to we put, that, put that output on the display so that we can, uh, we can see the result. And then the last instruction halts the computer. And so that just stops execution. So how do we program this into the computer? So the computer uh, memory here, we can program it in using these dip switches. But how do we convert this, uh, this, this set of instructions into something that we can, we can use our dip switches? And so that's, that's a, sort of a, a step here that we need to do, which is converting each of these, uh, each of these commands, or each of these, uh, what they're called opcodes, op uh, into, into binary that we, can, that we can input into the computer using the dip switches. And so if you remember, each of these opcodes has a, has a binary thing associated with it. So what we, what we do is this, this program here is uh, kind of in a format that we call assembly language. And so the sort of next step here is to do a process which is called assembling it, um, which is where we convert the program from assembly language to um, this binary, which is the machine language. And so the machine language is actually what we can input into the computer and what the computer is going to run, because the computer just understands these ones and zeros. Um, and so the address portion of our program, this is just what address we're putting each of these commands into. So the addresses are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So there's a total of six bytes of memory that we're using for the program and the data. And so if we just convert those to binary, this is 0, 1, uh, this is 2 in binary, 3, 4, and this is 5 in binary. So we just convert those addresses. The instructions, uh, we, we go ahead and look over here at what the, what the actual binary equivalent of each of these instruction opcodes is. So the load A, for example, if we look over here, it's 0001. And so we've converted that here uh, 0001. The add opcode 0010, we've converted that 0010. Output is 0101, so you see that there. And then halt is 1111. Um, so you can see we've just converted these, these sort of more intuitive, uh, uh, use that word loosely, uh, these sort of intuitive opcodes into the binary. And then some of these opcodes have a uh, parameter that associated with it. So the, the load A and the add both have a memory address that goes with that. So we're loading A uh, with the contents of memory address 4, um, and we're adding the contents of memory address 5. Um, and so that just gets converted over here. So 0, 1, 0, 0 is just 4 in binary. And 0, 1, 0, 1 is just 5 in binary. So that's just converted over. The output and the halt, there's no parameter that goes with that. So we can just put all zeros there. And then finally, for the data, we've got the 14 and the 28. Those just get converted to binary. So this is just the binary equivalent of 14. This is just the binary equivalent of 28. Um, and so once we've converted all this to binary, we can go ahead and enter it into the computer using these switches. Let's get this out of the way. And the way this works is right now the computer is in run mode. Um, so we want to, uh, but the clock is stopped, so that's fine. So we want to convert, we want to switch this over to program mode. Um, that's just this switch here. And when we're in program mode, we can set the memory address that we want to program here. And then we can set the data that we want to put into that memory location here. And then we just push this button over here to, to actually program it. 
So we'll just start where we've already got 0000, 000 set as the address. So the instruction is 0001. So we'll set that one here, 0100. And so I just set those dip switches so uh, zeros are down, ones are up. And then I just push this button here and it programs it in. And so now we can see that the memory contents are 00010100. Then we can move on to the next. So 0001 is the address. So this next address, as soon as I change this address, you see the memory contents now are all zero. But I can set them. So this memory, I'm just going to set all these switches to zeros. 0010, 0010, 0101. Set those switches, push that button, and now Location, memory location one is now programmed with, with this value. And so I'm just going to move along, and the next address is 0010, and the contents of that are going to be 0101, all zeros. That's our output command. And then the next address is 0011. And this is going to be a halt, which is just 1111. Program that, so we've got 1111. Okay, so that's the program. And now we just need to put the data. And this is just going to be the two numbers that we're, that we're adding together. So you remember, um, we're adding 14 and 28. So in address locations 4 and 5, I'm going to put 14 and 28 in binary. So 4 is going to be 0, 0, or 0, 1, 0, 0 is 4. You can see that there. And the 14, we want to put here, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. That's 14. Do we program that? And then finally, the second operand, 0, 1, 0, 1 is the address. And the second operand is going to be 28, which is 0, 0, 0. Oh, I think I actually programmed 28 into address 4. So let me program. 28 here into address 5, and then go back to address 4, and yeah, you can see 28 is in there. So really what I want to do is change these switches and program that again. And here we have it. It's four zeros, three ones, and then a zero. That's the 14. So now that's programmed into address location 4. Okay, so I think everything is programmed now. If I want to, I can go back and check by, by setting these addresses. So if I go to address 0, I should see the 0010100. I can and I can just kind of flip through each of these addresses and see what's in memory. And that looks right. Go to the next address. This looks right. If I go to the next address, this looks right. And then let me just double check the data because I think I almost made a mistake there. So this is the first piece of data. And this looks like 14. And then the next final piece of data here, this does look like 28. OK, so I think the computer is programmed correctly. So at this point, we can switch it back to the run mode. And you see now the, the memory address switches here no longer affect what memory we're looking at, because the rest of the computer is controlling that. Um, so I can zoom out here. And let's actually just try to run this program and see if it works. And so the way we run it is these switches here reset. There's like three different kind of reset switches that reset different parts of the computer. So we've reset all of that. And right now the clock is stopped. Um, but if I start the clock, it should go through and execute that program. And it looks like it did. And the answer is 42. Um, I'm going to reset this again. And I'm actually surprised it didn't run a little bit slower. Here we go. I think this capacitor wasn't set in there correctly. So now it's running a little bit slower. And I'm not sure why it came up with 28. Let me reset it again. Run it again. And it looks like it got to 42 and it halted. Yeah, so I think um, when I first ran it, it ran very fast. And I think that's because this capacitor, which is uh, affecting the clock speed it was not uh, set in there properly. So it uh, the clock ran super fast and it just like immediately came up with a computation 
And then the second time I ran it, I'm not sure why I got that 28. Maybe I hadn't reset it properly after I had fiddled with this capacitor. But um, it looks like now if I st stop the clock, reset everything, and then start it, you can see it stepping through. And hopefully it will come up with the same answer again. And it looks like it did, and then it's going to go and do the halt. And uh, that's it. And so maybe uh, in the next video I'll uh, walk through step by step and see exactly how the execution works.